I want to emphasize that the right to remain silent is something that everyone has, not just citizens, but also those who don't have citizenship in the United States. Um, this is particularly important in, in deportation proceedings or removal proceedings, as they are called now, because the burden, the, the burden of proof lies with the government. Um, it is the government's burden to prove where somebody's from, alienage, um, and also how they enter the United States. So when you come into contact with the police or with immigration, for example, and you immediately tell them where you're from, for example, I'm from Mexico, or I entered without papers, you've done the work of the government's attorneys for them already. Um, it's their burden, and, and they, need, they need to meet their burden. As we saw in the program, um, it's a, I think it's important to note that the policemen, police officers have a very dangerous job. And so if, if it can be helped, I think people should try to speak in English when they have encounters with the police instead of their own language. And the reason for that is that um, if, the police, if the police officer doesn't understand what the individual is saying or what more than one individual is saying in a car, they might suspect that uh, the individuals are signaling to each other or speaking to each other about um, nefarious motives or bad things. And so the, the, police of, the situation might get worse and the police officer might take it to a whole other level. So um, I think the, the key here is to be maintaining open communication between the individual and the police officer. Burden of proof. Uh, I think one of the most important things for non-citizens to understand is that even though you may have many of the same civil rights um, or constitutional rights that citizens have in the United States, the burden of proof is very different. Um, we won't be we won't be arguing about the civil rights violations in front of a, um, a regular judge. You're, you're going to be presenting your civil right violation in front of an immigration court that has, um, that lacks real judicial power. Um, and, and the rules are very different. The burden is much higher in immigration court for us, for the individual that suffered the, the civil rights violation. And, and, and the judges are just, um, they just don't have the same judicial powers because they're not Article Three judges. Um, so it's very important for non-citizens to, to think about the details of a violation. So if they have an encounter with the police, an arrest, if there's a warrant, if there's something that happens, a search, and the individual believes that their rights have somehow um, been violated, they need to try to remember the details well. Um, details such as who the officer was, if they can get the names, and um, you know, where the, where the agents came from, are they local police, are they state police, um, it, words that were spoken to them that might indicate that uh, the officer in question is violating their rights. Um, these, are, these are all very important when you're presenting a motion to suppress an immigration court versus criminal court. So remember that in, in these situations, the non-citizen has a very high burden of proof. As tempting as it is, it's always better to give no documents rather than fake documents. If you have fake documents in your possession, it's not going to be helpful to you. The truth is, is that you can be criminally prosecuted for both possession and use of uh, fake documents. So no matter how tempting it is, I can't emphasize enough the importance of not giving fake documents. It's just better to give no documents. Um, first, because, as I said, you can be criminally prosecuted, and second, because the, the uh, uh, a conviction that results from possession or use of a fake document can have long-term consequences for a person's immigration case. So it, in the end, it's, it's really, it's just not going to be helpful to you on, on any level. If someone has fake documents, I think that the, what, what might happen is that that's most likely to lead to an arrest because then the police officer has, probably has knowledge at that point that you're, that you're possessing or, or possibly using the fake documents. And so even if the situation is minor and the police officer asks for a document, he, he might be inclined to let you go, like, ah, this is just a, you know, a no driver's license situation. But once you present that fake document, I think that it places more of an obligation on the police officer to actually arrest you and take you in. Um, and then uh, you, you're going to have a criminal prosecution most likely. Also, I think that that possession of the fake document is more likely to lead to a call to the immigration authorities because they have a reason to suspect a problem with your lawful status, which can only lead them to want to call immigration. Um, not having any documents, presenting no documents, uh, may still lead to an arrest or it may just lead to letting you go away because they understand the situation. Except for that the, the other thing about it is that that possession, if you end up with a, a conviction for possession or use of fake documents 
And later on down the road during immigration proceedings, it, it has an effect on the discretion. So if there's a possibility that you're going to be able to stay in the United States because you have some application that you can file, there's always a discretionary aspect to immigration court proceedings. And so that possession of or use of a fraudulent document is, is it, it's, it's a negative factor. All non-citizens have the right to speak to their consulate, period. Um, everyone should assert this right. There, there's not a lot to say about this except that everyone should be doing it. And a lot of people don't. Um, the consulates are there to help, to help their citizens. And so they can help in a lot of different ways. It may be in terms of getting um, representation, although they don't have to pay for it, but it, they can help you to locate representation. Or it may be just helping you with getting a document so that you can, so you can be deported faster or um, obtaining other documents of identity that you need for your case.